Yesterday, I warned you guys about the stocks coming lower, and today, ASML had earnings come out. Yikes, down 12.74%. And we look, we did have a lot of earnings coming out today, and after the bell, we still have United Airlines, which is expected to move plus or minus 9% on the day. Then we jump over and look at the Fear and Greed Index, and just like that, we are back in neutral territory. So we swung into greed for just a bitty, bitty, small fraction of time. Boop right back into neutral. Now, is this nothing more than a speed bump in the market or are stocks gonna continue to come crashing lower? We come over and look at how the indices fare. The only one in the green was the Dow up 243 points. The NASDAQ was down 512 points. S&P 500 down 78 points. The Russell 2000 down 2.29 points. And we look at declining issues versus advance. It's really not that surprising that we saw 61.5% of issues actually declining today given bloodbath that we see in the market now now the dow is shaking its head saying i don't know what is wrong guys the water's warm come on in there was nothing to worry about we come over and look at the sector's performance today consumer defensive leading the way followed by energy real estate financial and that was it in terms of positive sectors on the day technology getting smacked out here today and if we come over and we look at nvidia for instance nvidia we've been talking about this potential abc pattern on the way down and what do we see? We're almost at that level at 113.21. Now we can see we can say that this is a lower high. We're also closing right near or right below the swing low over here, which would validate that yes, indeed, this is gonna be a lower high and we're gonna to continue to go lower. If we look at the MACD indicator, clearly trending to the downside, and even the some of the wind was taken out of Tesla sales. Tesla today was down 3.1%. And then we look at Apple. Apple today was down 2.53%. Then we jump over and take a look at Microsoft. Microsoft was down 1.34%. So essentially technology getting slaughtered out there. Here's where we look at the NASDAQ and all I see is red, 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 red. I don't see hardly any green. I think Cisco right here was up 2.31%. CMCSA was up 2.4%. But if you look at this, when you first look at it at first glance, everything was in the red. NVIDIA down 6%. AVGO down 7.91%. But then we come over and look at the Dow. We still had Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon, Salesforce pulling the Dow down. But I guess enough of the other stocks were able to lift the Dow up higher. Stocks like United Health up 4.45%. So the question is, what is in store for tomorrow? Well, I've been warning you guys, pay attention to the volatility index. All right, we were near 52-week lows. I said, watch out. We could see a volatility spike at any moment. And now today we are up. 9.55%. If we could have been up another half a percent, that would indicate that either tomorrow or the next day would likely be a bullish day in the market, aka a little bit of a bounce back. We come over and take a look at the dollar index today. Dollar index falling down lower as well, which normally would favor the bulls. Then we look at the 10 year yield. 10 year yield was also on the decline today. However, the bulls just could not get help. The bears were out in full force, at least in terms of the SP 500 and the NASDAQ stocks. We come over and take a look at gold, the precious metal and gold. Gold made a new all-time high. Now it's starting to reject. And will we see gold starting to come down towards some of these higher volume areas on the composite profile? Cer something we most certainly want to pay attention to. And let's not forget, Netflix has earnings coming out later this week. And we'll see if, if Netflix can go ahead and resume the trend on the upside. We take a look at the diamonds real quick, another strong close. But then we look at small caps, small caps, Closing with a shooting star type of candle. This is a bearish candle, especially after we've had that straight vertical move on the way up. Could we see the small caps potentially coming down and start filling in some of these gaps? If you look, we have one gap, two gap, three gap, four gaps consecutively without any of them being filled. I think it'd be foolish to think that there's no way that the small caps are going to come back and start filling in some of these gaps. We come over and look at the QQQs, big gap down today. And essentially we, we went ahead and completed that harmonic pattern right there. And if you look, we came right into the next volume area on the composite profile. And what we got to be worried about is could we see somewhere down here around 470, 469, right within this minus development area, see the NASDAQ come into that area, reject and come back up. If you look out here on the MACD indicator, what do we have? It's elevated up at these levels and we got a bearish cross, which is something we most certainly want to pay attention to as well. Then we look on the four hour chart, MACD indicator crossed to the downside and on the one hour chart, 
we are way below the zero line. Will this start to firm up? Because as we look at the 30 minute chart, it looks like the MACD indicator may want to firm up. You can see today, yes, indeed, we sold off, but then we essentially consolidated down here near the lows. And the question is, are we going to get some resumption back up, possibly coming into this gap as early as tomorrow? If you think that is going to be the case, well, what would be the driving force behind it? If we look at the economic calendar for tomorrow, what do we have on deck? Keep in mind, tomorrow at 8.15, Europe has their interest rate decision, and I want you to pay very close attention. Not necessarily 8.15, but when 8.45, once the press conference gets underway, that could cause a huge move in the euro, and since the euro is the highest weight in the dollar index, if the dollar index has extreme moves to the upside or downside that can have implications for our markets tomorrow at 8 30 we also have the weekly unemployment claims and we have the philly fed manufacturing coming out as well and we do have some fomc members speaking throughout the day i want to make everybody aware apex 7 a massive 80 percent sale off all their valuation accounts passing as little as one day and you can also get a 150k account for only 40 dollars you get a 250k account for only 40 dollars you get a 300k account for only 40 dollars so if you want to take advantage of this offer use the link in the description box down below and use the promo code mike at checkout now when we look at this right here it looks like this very well could come true with the nasdaq once again tops out in the month of july now let me know in the comment section down below do you think the nasdaq is going to top out in the month of july let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below and give the video a big thumbs up. Now we look out here on the composite profile. We talked this morning about this ABC pattern completion. Well, we made it all the way there and we made it down to the untested point of control at 20,012.25. Now the question is, do we start to get a bounce? And I would say it lit, we are highly likely going to get some type of bounce up as early as tomorrow. And let me go ahead and remove some of the drawings. When we start to bounce up, I want to pay attention to if we get a decent bounce, I want to pay attention to this area on the composite profile as an area of focus. That's going to be anywhere from 20,180 up to about 20,237. Also, if we pull a Fibonacci retracement from swing high down to the swing low, if you notice that area is right before the 38% retracement, a lot of times we'll come up to 38% retracement and then we'll get a reaction back in the opposite direction. So we most certainly want to keep our eyes on that area. Then we come over and look at the daily levels. Notice we have a lot of volume down here at these levels, and we'll see if that is enough to go ahead and turn the market back to the upside. And notice earlier today that 20,000 price mark was essentially holding price. And why do you guys think that the NASDAQ had a hard time pushing below 20,000? If I go ahead and I draw this out, you can see 20,000 was right here. That's where he came right here. Boom. We get a rejection right off that level. Well, right down here on book map, we could see right here at 20,000, we had a very large order that was sitting out there for quite a time. You can see we sold into it. Boop. As soon as we got back above that, boop, easy move on the way up. And I hope you guys like those boop sound effects. Now we look at the volume profile levels. Value area low is going to come in at 19,967.50. The point of control will be up here at 20,000. 44.50 and value area high will be up here about 20,199. Now, one thing I want you guys to pay attention to, if we start to get a bounce tonight or even tomorrow, I want you guys to focus on this minus development area here. The first time we come up into it, we could potentially get a rejection back down. And, you know, so we want to proceed with caution as we get to that area. We start pushing to the other side. Then I want to focus on this area. And then I want to focus on the other minus development area right over here. And tonight you'll see me probably trying to target those levels during tonight's live stream. Now we come over, look at this, the spy. What do we get? We get a gap down. We don't quite have the MACD indicator cross to the downside just yet. It's close, but it's not there. Four hour chart, MACD indicator just crossed into the downside. And on the one hour chart, we have a good separation of the lines. We are down below the zero line. And then as we go to the 30 minute chart, you can see the flattening of the MACD indicator, which kind of correlates with this lower level consolidation that we had throughout the day. So now the question is, do we start to get a bounce as early as tonight? And keep in mind, if we start to bounce, this gap could come into play and we have the economic news tomorrow that actually could push prices up towards that area. So we most certainly do not wanna be sleeping on that. Today's profile was also a B as in boy, which signifies if we get above value area high, we're likely gonna explore the upper third of the range and maybe all the way back up towards gap resistance or even get much deeper within that gap, which we'll talk about in tomorrow morning's video. As we come over and we look at the S&P 500, what do we see? Well, we came where? 
right down towards this high volume area and we basically stalled. We were able to take out last week's point of control. So now that level has been tested. We can go ahead and check that off. One less level that we need to concern ourselves with moving forward. However, since we broke below value area high, we have the rotation down and we want to be mindful that we could be on our way down towards 5617.75. That would also put us right on the edge, right coming into this MICE development area, which is something I do want to focus on moving forward. Then we come out here and we look at the 30 minute volume profile levels and notice today, what do we do? Right when we came into the MICE development area, boom, we reject up. We come in again, we reject up and then ultimately we succumbed and prices came drastically lower. Now we look at this profile, very poor market structure on the upper end of the profile. And that's going to lend to the case that if we get up into this area, it could act as a vac vacuum, really pulling prices substantially higher from that area. Then as we look at the value areas, we have value area high coming in at 56, 57.50. The point of control is going to be down here at 56, 41.00. Value area low is going to come in at 56, 37.75. If we get, if we're staying above value area low, I'm going to be looking for the point of control to get tested. And even this level right over here at about 56, 50. So tonight, this is going to be my MO. We're above value area low. I'm going to be looking to target these two areas, knowing that there could still be more weakness up ahead. But if you look at the range, today was an 86 point range. And on the NASDAQ, we had a 632 point range. Normally, what occurs after a day like this, we actually end up forming a Diaz and dog shaped profile. Be unexpected if the market goes up a little bit, probes down a little bit, and we just have a back and forth day. And that would set up a breakout or breakdown day coming up on Friday. Now, if you guys want to learn three ways to profit from using moving averages, watch this video right here.